50 years ago today, the Stars and Stripes was hosted above the Pacific Island of Okinawa, and the end of World War II was that much closer. But the victory came at a terrible cost. Thousands of good men lost their lives. One of them was Tulson Albert Schwab. Here's News on 6 reporter Scott Thompson. The capture of Okinawa meant American forces were one step closer to the Japanese home islands. It was a battle that lasted 82 hellish days. It was waged from the sea, the air, and the ground. And more than 100,000 soldiers, Japanese and American, were killed. One of them was Marine Private Albert Schwab of Tulsa. He uh, decided that, that he would go forward, and he knew he was risking his life and would probably lose it. Uh, but he, he did that to save his comrades. And I'm just very proud of that. On May 7, 1945, the same day Nazi Germany was surrendering in Europe, Albert Schwab found his unit pinned down on Okinawa. With a 75-pound flamethrower on his back, he advanced up a ridge and took out two enemy machine gun nests before Japanese bullets ended his life. Albert Schwab died a hero at 25. I think it's very important to remember his sacrifice. Uh, we all have to realize that freedom has come through many many sacrifices and a lot of people take that freedom for granted not joanne carlson there's his wedding picture and, uh, well, there he is she keeps a scrapbook of her brother's life his days as a star athlete at central high school the marine base on okinawa named for albert the congressional medal of honor awarded him in death by president truman Albert Schwab was the only Tulson to earn that medal during the Second World War. And two years ago, Marines, young and old, gathered to dedicate a new tombstone for Albert Schwab that proclaims the honor to anyone who cares to stop and look. Everybody now uh, is so self-centered, it seems. And I, I'm just very impressed that my brother was one of those that, that gave up his life for others. Heroes never start out to be that way. No doubt Albert Schwab looked forward to a long life after the war. But sometimes fate asks us to decide in a split second. And some of us die as heroes. I have his picture right over there and a picture of his medal over there. And I, uh, it, it would be true to say that I think of him every day. Scott Thompson, The News on Six. The CBS Evening News remembers the sacrifice made by Private Schwab and two other Americans killed on Okinawa. In tonight's Eye on America segment of the CBS Evening News, and that's up next here on Channel 6. Oh, we're so proud of him and so glad that we got to see that. Mm -hmm. It's really touching. It it's... is, and it, to, to have that relationship from his sister and, and her preserving his memory, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. And that's our time for now. Thank you for joining us. Good night. years ago today, Japanese forces finally surrendered the big island of Okinawa. For America, it was the costliest battle of World War II in the Pacific. 12,000 American soldiers and sailors were killed. But that's not all that died. Wyatt Andrews reports on the ultimate unknown cost of war in tonight's Eye on America. During the battle for Okinawa, somewhere on this tranquil ocean, Navy man Barton Campbell was killed. His widow, Mary Jackson, has no doubt he would have been an engineer. He had his life planned. He had it planned years ahead of time. On the infamous Sugarloaf Hill, Marine Lieutenant George Murphy died. He would have been a football coach. His best friend, John Rail, is sure. He loved, loved the game. He loved kids. He was a, a good leader, inspirational leader. And out on some nameless ridge, Albert Schwab, a Marine flamethrower, gave his life. His sister, Betty Carr, says Albert would have been an oil man. He was fantastic. He was just super. He was going somewhere. I could tell that. He was going to places. In 82 days of fighting on Okinawa, we lost 12,000 Americans. That's 12,000 future teachers, shop foremen, inventors. There was nothing else like it in the war. D-Day was more deadly, but no battle was more ferocious. The fighting is savage. 
The great newspaper man Ernie Pyle was killed in the battle for Okinawa, but not before forecasting the onslaught. His Marine shipmate, Gordon Heim, saved the message Pyle wrote the night of the invasion. To you on the ship, and you on the boats, and you on the beaches, good luck. I hope you wish me the same. I'll need it too. In Pyle's pocket was his last dispatch, describing, quote, dead men in monstrous infinity. At the worst of Okinawa, were there dead in monstrous infinity? Yes, wounded, killed, the grind, 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 grind. It just kept, kept up. Okinawa cost so much life because it was the island America had to have, the base for the planned invasion of Japan, which also made it ground the Japanese had to hold. In 82 days of hell, then, young men from the U.S. heartland faced down 1,500 human bomb kamikaze attacks at sea. They methodically conquered an enemy who was fighting to the death. Young men from South Bend, from Tulsa, from Covington, Kentucky. All these small towns all over the country are uh, full of all these uh, men that, that uh, volunteered, and they were fighting for their country. And giving their country their potential. George Murphy, husband and father, once Notre Dame's football captain, gathering in passes and running downfield, he died gathering a wounded Marine and running down Sugarloaf Hill. He was assigned with 60 men and whatnot, and uh, ended up with six. Was killed by going back up the hill to get this one kid and bring him down. Barton Campbell, another husband and father, a kamikaze victim who tried to lead his men from his deathbed. As my husband was dying, since he was the chief there, he kept encouraging the guys to hold on. Albert Schwab, a husband and father, won the Congressional Medal of Honor, taking out two enemy machine guns shielding his company and then falling himself. He wanted to save his buddies. He wanted to keep going. He wasn't afraid of anything. They never had the time left to, to uh, fulfill their dreams. And uh, they, they were sacrificed. These 12,000 Americans never worked a farm or built businesses, but they helped create an era of relative peace. They had no way to know they were fighting the last big fight of World War II or that for 50 years, no enemy would again attack American soil. In Racine, Wisconsin, Wyatt Andrews for Eye on America.